No D no, my friend. What the fuck is going on, people? And animals, if you may be overhearing this, it's your boy here, Adam Pecora. Welcome back to Requiem for a Tuesday. How the fuck are ya? I can tell you this right now. I'm fired up. And the, uh, if you if you are aware of what I was just quoting, you know why. So before we get into what we're gonna get into, let me pluggy plug. Please, please, please rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. We on Spotify, we on Apple, we on Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Fucking, uh, what do we got here? You know, we're on everything. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever other ones, go get them. Uh, YouTube, you name it, we're there. Uh, spread the word. Let's get the numbies up. They're they're doing better now. I think um, my band may be slowly lifting, <laughs> but I don't know. Too hard to say. Too early to tell, frankly. Uh, we got we got music. I got some solo stuff under Wolf X in a band called Multiplex. You put out a record in October of this year called Google, G-O-O-G-O-L, like the number. It's spectacular. If you like electronic, experimental, anything in that realm, check it out. Um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. We're very proud of it. Uh, and check out Justice's show, Microwave Minutes. Season 2 just started. Uh, and you can follow me on Instagram at adam.rfat. Sorry, I'm blanking on here. We got too much stuff. So much stuff. It's all linked in the description below on any whatever you're listening to. As long as there's a description option, it's there. So check all that stuff out. It's right there for you. Consume. My garbage, please. Thank you. But let's get into the meat and potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. Spoilers abound in this one. Uh, So if you have not finished season three of Succession, you're going to have to turn away here. I'm sorry. I got to go right into it. It's all I've been thinking about all day. First thing I wanted to do when I woke up this morning was read and listen to people discussing this shit because it is fucking incredible. Uh, Season three in the books. Now, I loved season two a lot. Maybe it's recency bias. Maybe it was the year plus weight or what year plus extra weight, maybe. Did season two come out in 2019? That sounds right. So yeah, it's been a long time. But I loved season three. Maybe it's also because first time I'm watching it weekly. Um, I've always said the weekly impact is a thing. I like it better. Um, As much as my initial personal preference might be like, oh man, I wish I could just watch all of this right now. Um, and you know, going back to back is always fun. It, it is more impactful and more enjoyable if you go weekly. It's just how it is. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of science behind it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure there's resources being wasted into those type of studies out there somewhere. This is not the place for that. Uh, the budget is far too small, but if you want to throw some coin at me, you know what I mean? I could partake in some studies. This show is perfect. It's a combination of hilarious comedy straight up and unrelenting drama. And they transition between the two seamlessly, even in the finale today. Didn't even have to transition, merge them into one thing. And it's just a testament to how fucking good and just dialed in these people are. Uh, thank you, all you succession workers, for bestowing this unbelievable show upon us. 
you really just never have any idea what's going to happen where you don't know what little throwaway line wasn't quite a throwaway line. You never know what major plot point that happens isn't really that big of a deal. It also, sorry, I just had a fucking aneurysm or something right there. Uh, (laughs) It also bridges the gap between episodic and serial very well in that way because you know like oh the fbi is here here's the raid and it's like oh this is the turning point that's where this season's gonna go and it's like no they were fine (laughs) that wasn't actually a real problem and before you know it we're on to something else the episodes pick up things happen in between the show is only showing you what it wants to show you um, it does a great perspective of, oh, this deal is getting done behind closed doors. That means to everybody it's done behind everyone's back or it isn't. Um, last week is a great example of that as well, where the narrative outside of the show became, oh, Kendall might be dead because the Jeremy Strong. Uh, what is it? Profile. Jesus, I am. Not thinking that well. Uh <laughs> The Jeremy Strong profile drops and everybody's like, oh, well, the timing of this is weird and he might be difficult to work with and blah, blah, blah. Uh, We can say for sure right now, regardless who gives a fuck how hard he is to work with, I think that everybody there gets paid plenty. So you can just put that to bed, especially given the performances that this guy gives week in and week out. I mean, he is 100% that guy. That is a real person. (laughs) Kendall Roy is a real guy. Uh, when those cameras are rolling, because that is a broken man, and I I don't know if anything I've ever seen showcases it like this, um, because they save all of their like I don't know for lack of a better term like melodrama, and they lead you towards things like that, but then they just don't happen, right? So it's like, oh, he's dead, and then they just start off, and it's like, no, he was fine. We're just going to make jokes about what just happened. You know, and it's just like, oh, curveball, like, no, that didn't matter either. Ha ha, you thought that that mattered? No, that doesn't matter at all. It's like, oh, fuck. And then when he finally breaks down with Roman and Shiv on the beach or wherever they are, my jaw was open. I was just like, finally, this moment is happening. A lot of things are finally all coming together. And that scene was just absolutely riveting because this guy's totally breaking down. Shiv is kind of pretending to care. She just wants her deal to happen, whatever. Roman, throughout the season, has shown that he's the only person who actually does care about people's feelings. The ironic thing is just that He's unable to deal with feelings at the same time. So it's like he just wants everybody to be good and like put on a face and like not show whatever's bothering them. But when something actually comes up, he's like there for people. Um, I just think that that's what I like the most about this season is that everybody kind of finally got to show more of who they actually are and like. I don't know, you got little bits and pieces here and there. Like, Shiv, we could never figure out. I I went into the season thinking Shiv was on it. Good shit, you know? Kendall thought she was good and shit. They just kept pushing that. See, that's another thing. Everybody kept telling you, oh, Shiv is smart and good and capable, but then everything that happens in the show tells you that she's an idiot and doesn't know what she's doing. And I kept being like, okay, well, when is she going to turn this around? Only to reveal, no, she is a fucking moron. And, I, you know, that... That got put to bed like two, three episodes in. Don't get me wrong. Um, But it's just remarkable that everything you think you can know about people. And it's like you assume that Roman's a fuck up because at one point he lets a satellite explode because of negligence. And then he does this and then he does that. But then he's crushing it all season only to let it fall with a dick pic. And it's just like, holy shit. And basically you watch it all happen before your eyes. Like Logan went through each kid. That's what it's been. And realized all of them are dumb fucks. None of them are capable of doing anything that he does or remotely similar. And he doesn't actually trust them with anything. Roman had it right there in the bag, so that's the most heartbreaking one, obviously. Um, But it's just crazy the way... 
I don't know, at least me personally, I was like manipulated, obviously on purpose, by the show to think one thing, never know what's coming, and then still be wrong, even with what you could maybe think will happen. It's it's just very rare. It, the, it almost plays out the way like, I mean, I guess this is a stretch, but I was going to say the way like a thriller plays out and then there's a twist and you're like, oh, fuck, I was way off on what I thought that was going to be. They could do that three, four times in an episode. It is really just, it might be the most well-written show I've ever watched in that realm. Now, there could be some continuity loss here or there. Like if you go back and watch like Tom and Greg, that started as like an abusive thing that just kind of flipped into a like playful like comedy aside between the two, which is great. That was obviously the right decision. They are my favorite duo on the show. A big shocker there. I mean, the comedy guy. But they just play off each other so perfectly. And lo and behold, Tom Wamsgans, now the alpha dog in the whole crew? Like, what the fuck? Nobody saw that coming. I can tell you that for sure. And he deserves it because, I mean, he should have known not to marry Shiv to begin with, but the whole time, you can almost see people thinking like, just like with Willa, like, if I don't do this, am I throwing away so much that it's not worth just dealing with? If that makes sense, like, is the potential of a high position and a lot of money worth more than like my own personal happiness? And, you know, almost everybody would decide that it is when we're talking that much money, because it's like, how happy would I be if I left this too? you're like forced into this circumstance and this decision making. And I don't know, fucking Shiv is the worst. <laughs> All the shit that she has said to Tom so many fucking times. And then this season with the sex stuff where she is just like, I don't love you. And you know, all of that is a hundred percent true. And he's like, I'm going to prison. I'm going to prison. And she doesn't care. She doesn't look into it. She doesn't try to help. I mean, you know, what, what does that guy have? And then she finally is like, let's have a baby. And then throws all this other shit at him about how she wants to free shit but totally wants to bail. You know, she's basically just saying, I want to have a kid despite my mom, but I still don't really want it to be with you, but I guess it kind of has to be. And it's just fucking horse shit. And then, you know, it all calls back to when Tom had that meeting with Kendall. And he's like, look, man, nobody's ever fucked Logan. I don't think that you're gonna, you know? And he had to be thinking the exact same thing. He's aware that his wife's a dumb fuck. So she says, oh, we're going to take him down. I I didn't once think that that would have been what it was. That Tom would have been the guy to like tip off Logan and do all that. And, you know, that's the other thing. Any other show would have a scene that shows that happening. And it's like, oh, look at the drama of the double cross. They don't show you anything that is just purely, I don't know what, like exposition? I I don't know if that's even being used correctly. But they just don't spoon feed you anything. You're going to know what you need to know when you need to know it. We're not going to like kill Kendall because that would be the really dramatic thing for that moment. It's like instead... Why don't you just wonder that and then we'll completely blow it off because the impact of that episode still stands. So I don't know. It, they just have complete control over everything that's going on at all times. And uh, I, I just fucking love it. And everything with Logan, I mean, trying to be like. I guess nice for like 10 seconds to pretend like nothing bad's happening right away. Just as he's just 10 steps ahead of everyone in every way. And um, for a second, I thought Roman was going to flip there at the end. He's like, no, come on with me. 
we got a spot for you. And all of a sudden, him and Shiv just realized what Kendall had been trying to tell them for, you know, the whole season. And even in season two, that, you know, he's going to fuck you too. He's just using everybody at all times. Now, I guess ultimately what I don't understand is why any of them actually want the position. I mean, I guess it's because, you know, they just want approval from their father. But now that they're, they clearly don't have it, you know, it's finally clear to them at least. Why would you be upset? He's like, oh, he's going to sell the company. I mean, you're going to end up with a boatload of cash, I'm sure, still to act like, I don't know. I guess we're the only ones who it's clear to that they're incapable of doing it and they all just think that they can just because. Right? I mean, I don't know. It's an impossible position to try to relate to in any way. Um, I guess just the idea of maybe having to go get a job sucks. But again, I don't think that that's like what's in the cards for them there. I It's tough to say. Maybe... The whole idea is just that this has all, like, been in their heads for however many years at this point. Um, So to keep putting in all that time and just, like, trying so hard and, like, you know what I mean, thinking that they're getting X amount done when really it's minuscule in the grand scheme of the company. And so it's just like, what the fuck? Like, in their minds, they worked their ass off and all deserved it, I guess. Um, which, you know, this season, at least Roman kind of did. He's the only reason this whole deal got set up in the first place. Uh, so I guess that probably is the reason why Logan offered to cut him in. But I mean, I don't know. Why would you want to do that at that point anyway? Uh, cause then, you know, you don't have your siblings and I don't know. It's going to be interesting next year for sure. Um, I hope that. Honestly, I just hope that Tom and Greg just end up very successful. (laughs) That would just be the most fun outcome where, like, everything works out for them. But, uh, uh, you know, I can't predict a scene to a scene, let alone an episode to an episode, and certainly not a season to a season. Right? I mean, fuck, the first three episodes of this season, I thought Kendall was on it and shit was going to happen. And then it just kept falling apart into a lesser and lesser thing. And I I guess that that's another example of, like, them misdirecting. Because I did believe he was, like, competent and capable and, like, ready to do something. And then, you know, his posse gets smaller and smaller each episode. And he's saying and doing less and less. And you realize, oh, this is all just performative and bullshit. I was late to that. I, I mean, I'll just be honest. I was like, oh, fuck, maybe he's really got something going here. But then it just became more and more apparent, like, oh, wait, there's not even a real plan. Like, oh, his end game was to get the company? I don't know. I guess in my head I thought he was, like, forming a new company, but that doesn't make sense either. So that's just on me, I guess, for being dumb, but you get what I'm saying. Like, they're constantly just shifting everything. And who knows, the next episode could start, or the next season, same thing, uh... A year after this one ended. It could start 10 seconds after. They shift time jumps like that all the time. The first few episodes of this season were all one after the other, obviously because a lot was going on, you know, within the chaos of Kendall revealing all that shit. But then, boom, now it's like, oh, it's been weeks, now it's been months, now it's been a couple days, now this one uh, is still at the wedding, which the last one was. So it's just like, It can really go in any direction, and that's very exciting, to say the least. Um, I don't think... I mean, I guess Shiv's conversation with their mom was the precursor that set up the fact that she would fuck them over, but that still seems very unlikely. Now, they also did show, like... Her new husband was literally just waiting for Logan to come to the wedding. Like, over all the other guests, they blew off Kendall as he walked in. 
and it seems like he's marrying her to get to Logan, and she's marrying him basically for no reason. The only reason they come up with is sex. That seems a little silly to me, um, but I guess, you know, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, Logan gives him his position or whatever, and she's like, fuck it. You know, he he wanted to be some parliament guy or whatever. And they just fucking make a deal. I'll revise this thing. You can get your company back. This guy gets his thing and we'll move on. And she did tell Shiv, like, I don't want, you know, this is what's best for you guys or whatever it was exactly. So I guess it does kind of add up. You know, if you look at all the little things that were laid there, it still just seems very unlikely. But. It's not exactly like these kids get treated well ever by either of their parents. So, you know, that's nitpicky, I could say. But, you know, that that's the one thing where I would just be like, all right. But the, the reveal of it was great. I mean, I, I had no idea how that was going to play out. You know, I mean... There's no way that Logan would have gone through with all that and not have worked out that extra little thing and not known that that was there. But, uh, you know, what a shitty mom. (laughs) In a way, you know, she's worse than Logan. At least Logan keeps him around. At least he gives him stuff to do. At least he talks to him every now and then. This bitch lives in England, doesn't fucking say shit. Kendall tried to confess he killed a kid to her. She said, fuck off. She told Shiv, wish I had dogs. Then she cuts them all out. It's pretty brutal. I mean, tough break. (laughs) Tough break. That's a rough mother. Um, Let's see. I just want to, you know, just shout out to Connor. Finally got his moment. Um, Basically comic relief the entire show, the whole time, and never really gets that much to do or say. It's just nice to have him there. This time, oh boy. You know, that scene when they're all at the table and he's like, I'm fucking sick of you guys talking about me. Like, I'm not. He, like that like I'm not the oldest brother like that I don't deserve shit too you guys talk amongst yourselves like all of you deserve something and he's like what about me like fucking welcome to my world this is what it's like to be Connor I don't know it's just good for him to stand up to himself that was a really good scene and to just see Will just continue continue Jesus to really still not be into this guy that much but it's just like they're 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 nice to each other like if anything that's the best relationship on the whole fucking show it's pretty crazy um and this season what i liked the most was that they put the minor characters to the back and they just let the things shine that they need to leave yeah, that they need to let shine like marcia doesn't need to be there like ever uh, it was a good call to not really have Kendall's kids be around. It's just, this is all like extra bullshit. They were needed to like set up the show and let you know what's going on and who's who and like characterize and all that shit. But now that we're at this point in the show, it's like we don't need to show them that because the show is not about that. You know, it's never about what happens when these people go home at the end of the day. It's technically always about business. The family just crosses over naturally. It's very interesting. It's a very delicate balance, and they always strike it right on. Um, If we get some more Skarsgård next season, too, that would be sick. He's very good as the Gojo guy. Um... I don't know. I wish I I wish I could come up with even remotely <laughs> a theory as to what might go down, but I really just have no fucking idea. The biggest thing I wonder is 
will it actually come back around the whole thing with Kendall and the kid? Uh, they've made that. That's been the one continuous thing in the plot that has stood up. Um, it initially kind of seemed like, oh, that's just another thing that's getting swept under the rug because that happened in season two, but then it just kept getting brought up um, and it's being brought up more now than ever. And so I feel like I just got to listen to what the show is saying because it's telling me this thing is going to matter. It's still being brought up in the finale of the third season. It happened in the finale of the first. You know? He um, was, there was that offer when he was going to do that show. Well, I guess this was after that when it, when everybody realized that he was just kind of a joke. His only offer was to go on a podcast, right? And they were going to deep dive a bunch of shit and they, they mentioned that that was going to happen uh and he said when he broke down too like oh they're coming for me and i mean there's no reason to think that that won't be the case so if anything is going to come to fruition with taking down logan in so many words that's the last card that they have left um, so maybe the kids are going to be like trying to push Kendall into reporting this or whatever, confessing, however you need to word it. And that'll be a big arc. I don't know. Um, cause it's also, it's hard to say cause couldn't Logan easily just bury them in court. You know what I mean? Just seems like he's too powerful to let yet another cover-up be the thing that eventually brings them down. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to be a writer on Succession. I can tell you that much. Look, I mean, I could ramble on about this show probably for two hours, and I'm sure there's stuff that I wanted to say that I forgot to say. I kind of just wanted to let it flow. So there's your fucking rough cut, nasty ass me trying to gather my thoughts for Succession Season 3. What a ride. Again, wish we could have got 10 episodes, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, hopefully the number total stays, you know, 9, 10. We don't we don't keep going down. I don't want to see no I said this before. I don't want a five episode season. So as long as that doesn't happen, that's fine. Although it'll be fucking spectacular. I'll take whatever the fuck they'll give me anyway. Who am I kidding? I'm a little fiend for this shit. And it was worth it. It was so worth it. You know, th if anything the last episode got as traditional drama as it's ever gotten. Um, you know, with Logan just taking over and everything. But it had to go somewhere. You know, for a few weeks, it's just like, what is this season even about? Like, what's the main arc? You can't really tell. And then it really all came together right at the end. Just spectacular. Just absolutely spectacular um that's probably gonna wrap it up for this week doing another shorty here just wanted to hop on to talk some success and yeah i think that's all i got i, I you know i'm sure i'll remember something and be like fuck i can't believe i left all that out but you know you can't make a tom went without breaking a few gregs <laughs> still one of my favorite lines in the entire series we'll be back next week probably talk a little more football didn't get to do that today but that's totally fine uh it was kind of a dull week a lot of blowouts still have no idea what the fuck is happening really who's good i couldn't i couldn't tell you you know <laughs> It's just been a wild season. Wild season of succession. Wild season of football. Um, 
yeah, I think that's it. I think we're going to get out of here. Thanks for tuning in again or for the first time, whichever it may be. Appreciate you. Rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday on any and all platforms. Check out all the stuff linked below. Plenty of goodies there for you. Hope you enjoy them. And uh, I'll get you out of here on this. Fun fact, I only broke into song because my voice completely stalled right there. So I didn't really mean to do that. A little inside tip there for you. I got you, buddy. But I'll get you out of here on this. <laughs> I almost fucked it up again. I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator.